It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, a presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. Good evening. This is David Ross. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope. Mr. William Bradford Huey, editor of the American Mercury, and Lieutenant Colonel Ansel Talbert, an editor of the New York Herald Tribune. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Fred A. Seaton, United States Senator from Nebraska. The opinions expressed are necessarily those of the speakers. Senator Seaton, I believe that you're a Nebraska newspaper man who's serving out the term of uh, the late Senator Wherry. Tonight, sir, we'd like you to tell us something about the unprecedented floods that you've had in your area. Now, can you describe for our audience something about how serious this flood has been, sir? Yes, I'd be glad to, Mr. Huey. This present Missouri River flood is the greatest in the history of man. Not only in the history of the white man, but also so far as the archaeologists can tell in the entire history of the Indians and anyone who may have come before them. How many people uh, lost their homes or were driven from their homes? So far as we're able to tell at the moment, about 80,000 people had to be evacuated with damage to a larger percentage of those homes than not. And what was the property damage? Uh, we believe it will exceed $300 million. Now, of course, this river has been rampaging and flooding for many years. Can you give us some indication of how much loss there's been over the period of the last 10 or 12 years? Well, in, in actual damages uh, to installations of buildings, of towns, of public utilities, of farm fence and barns and that sort of thing, the damage has been about uh, one and three quarters billions of dollars. Senator, uh, Congress has been blamed in certain quarters for not appropriating enough money for an adequate uh, flood control program. Do you think that's a fair criticism? Well, of course, as a member of that Congress, Colonel, you can hardly ask me to give you a complete affirmative. I would say that some of the fault has been Congress's, yes, and the determination of first things first, probably Congress has missed a little bit on what was first. Well, do you think uh, it's a matter of more money or better plans? I think it's a matter of more money because we have the plan. The the Pix Loan Plan, which was first uh, adopted in 1944, is thoroughly adequate so far as taking care of the Missouri River Basin and its flood situation is concerned. What we need is the money to carry the plan out. You can't stop the flood with paper. Our audience would like to know something about that Pix Loan <coughs> Plan. Now, is this the plan drawn up by the Army engineers for controlling the river? It is a composite plan, uh, Mr. Huey. Uh, the two authors of it were General Pick of the Army Engineers and Claire Sloan of the Department of Agriculture. Uh, technically, it is today known as the Pick Sloan Plan with the Young Amendment. The Young Amendment came about through the efforts of a man by the name of Gladwin Young, who uh, carried out the idea of upper watershed control of the, of the river so that you didn't start all of your efforts on the main stem. You held some of the water back, in other words, on the farms and the hillsides leading down to the tributaries of the main stem of the river. Now, this, this is a plan for the construction by the federal government of a, of a, of a number of dams. Is that That's correct? Right. That's correct. About how many dams does, is envisioned in the plan? Well, all in all, if you carried out the complete plan, there would be about 100 such installations in the Missouri Basin. Now, now remember, the Missouri Basin just isn't a little thing that a river flows down because actually you've got uh, about two-sixths of the land mass of the United States in that basin. But there are four major dams involved in it. Those four dams, when completed, would stop a repetition of the flood we had in 1952, at least. How does this uh, fit into President Truman's plan, I believe, involving $6 billion for national flood control? Is that part of the President's plan? Uh, yes, I'm glad you used the word part. It is part. Of course, the president's plan uh, encompasses a great many things besides the construction of these main stem, dam stem dams and the flood control in the tributaries and on the farmlands. I'd rather not get in the position of trying to defend the president's plan of six billion, sir, if you don't mind. <laughs> well, I, our audience, uh, uh, we, we, we know that we can spend a great deal of money and we can get some benefits, but now just how much money uh, do the people of the United States have to spend to complete the Pick Sloan plan? 
Well, to complete the PIC Sloan plan, again, for the, the job of controlling these ravaging floods on the Missouri River, would cost the people of the United States about a billion, three hundred million dollars, or four hundred uh, million dollars less than the floods have already cost the people in, of the United in, States. In other words, uh, the, the, these floods in the last ten years have cost the people of the United States more than it will cost to build these dams. Yes, that's right, and actual damages. Now, do those, other damages yes, too. now do those floods out there cost the people in, in New York and other people who live outside that area, are they expensive to us? Yes, <coughs> definitely so, in at least two ways. One may be rather intangible and difficult to visualize, but we know that whenever you have flood damage, or damage from anything, a tornado, which of course you can't control, that you then suffer about a 20% loss in income tax collections. Now, I assume that everybody listening to this program pays income taxes in this day and age in America. So you can charge up 20% of this total loss to the people here in New York State, for instance, their share of it, they're going to have to pay more taxes because those people out there won't make the money to pay them. Now then, specifically, so far as all of us are concerned, the 1952 flood on the Missouri River will cost the average family in the United States at least $15.50 on their grocery bill because, you see, the Missouri Basin is the breadbasket of America. And we know that those losses we suffered in farm produce will cause a 1% increase in the cost of everybody's food for the ensuing year. In other words, every family in New York or Atlanta or Jacksonville, Florida, or Chicago, every family in the United States will have to pay $15 more for food this year because of this flood. Is yes, that correct? That is, that is correct, and that's a very conservative figure that we can defend. Senator, uh, floods seem to be getting worse and worse. Uh, in your opinion, have we really accomplished anything in flood control up to now? Oh, yes, Colonel. Uh, we could talk all evening about that, but uh, just so far as the Missouri Basin is concerned, the construction of the Fort Peck Dam, which was closed last year, held enough of those floodwaters that had the dam not been there, the flood would have been two feet higher at Omaha Council Bluffs Pier in South Dakota than it was. Well, of course, it would just have caused additional millions and millions of dollars of damage because the chances are it would have been impossible to hold that flood within the levees, which this, which did hold the flood. Now, now the Fort Peck Dam it has been completed. Now, that's that's part of your Pick Sloan plan. It's one it? of the four major <coughs> dams, yes, sir. So you're telling us that because you you had that dam completed. The flood was not as bad as it would have been without that one. That's absolutely <coughs> correct. And each dam that is now completed uh, will reduce the danger of any, any future flood. Yes, I think everybody who has studied the river, the Army engineers, the civilian authorities, even the people who argue about the Pick Sloan plan, all will agree that the four dams, when completed, would have held these floodwaters back to the extent that instead of having a flood, we would have had a stage of the river about two feet less than flood height all the way down the river to where it joins the Mississippi. Does that make it clear for you? Yes. One of the issues that divides our people is the issue on the Tennessee Valley Authority. I think we Americans are divided into those of us who think TVA is something pretty great and those who do not. Now, uh, is there any enthusiasm in the Missouri Valley for a TVA plan? Very little, sir, and what there is is uh, engendered primarily by the executive department of the United States government and by the uh, Bureau of the Interior of the federal government. Well, Senator, uh, thinking on a national scale, in whose hands will the flood control uh, problems of the future fall? In the Army engineers, in a national well, authority, or...? Of course, that's a, that's a national question. Uh, so far as the Missouri Basin area is concerned, of the ten states out there in the Middle West and the West, if we have our way, the control of this thing will be in the hands of representatives of those ten states drawn from the so-called Ten State Compact and from the Governor's Conference of those ten states. Now, you know, are, are the Fort Peck Dam, I believe, there's no, it's not a hydroelectric dam, is it? No, it is not. It's just for flood control. That's right. Now, are any of the other proposed dams to be hydroelectric dams? Yes, uh, some of them are. However, the production of hydroelectric power or the production of electrical energy is not a major part of the Pick Sloan plan. It is interjected into the plan only so far as it is necessary to amortize the cost of some of these dams so that the irrigation water drawn from the dams will not be prohibitive in cost to the farmers. 
And in short now, our people can understand that in the Missouri Valley, you are not going to have under that plan a, de a power development similar to what we've had in the, in the Tennessee Valley and then out in the Northwest. No, you will have neither the emphasis on power that you had in the Tennessee Valley, nor you will, will you have the extent of manufacture. And, uh, and, and that area will remain primarily agricultural then, and, and, and your plan is designed primarily to aid uh, irrigation and, and crop development? Irrigation, of course, with the ensuing crop development, flood control, and navigation on the Missouri, at least up to the point of Omaha. Now, when, when sir, will the Pick Sloan plan for controlling this river, when will it be completed according to the present schedule? Well, according to the present schedule, on the basis of the appropriations which have been made up to fiscal year 53, it would be at least 1960 before these major dams were completed and the major installations were in on the river. Now, if we get our way, uh, we will try to hurry that up and certainly cut down that terminal date by uh, three years anyhow. I see. In other words, now Perhaps at present, four. there's eight years. Uh, it'll take eight years to complete it, and you as a senator from Nebraska are trying to cut down that time. I'm sure that our audience very much appreciates your views tonight, sir, and thank you for being with us. The editorial board for this edition of the Longine Chronoscope was Mr. William Bradford Huey and Lieutenant Colonel Ansel Talbert. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Fred A. Seaton, United States Senator from Nebraska. Do you have the problem of selecting a gift of great prestige for someone important to you? Well, that problem is most happily solved with Longine, the world's most honored watch, because of the fine quality of the Longine watch and because of what the name Longine stands for. To the whole world, Longine stands as the only watch in history to win highest of all awards 38 times at World's Fairs and International Expositions including 10 grand prizes and 28 gold medals. Longines stands as the watch of first choice in sports, science, and other fields of precise timing. And Longines stands for the watch that has won highest observatory accuracy honors. The gift of great prestige for any important occasion is Longines, the world's most honored watch. And throughout the world, no other name on a watch means so much. Yet you may buy and own, or buy and proudly give a Longine watch for as little as $71.50. Longine, the world's most honored watch, premier product of the Longine Whitnor Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. For the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines, sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. This is the CBS television.